Well, it's Monday morning and I can only sit around drinking coffee instead of working for so long. So I better start on doing something. Schneider Kruznak Retina Xenon 50mm f1.9 and this lens is a Retina S type lens and it probably belongs to a Reflex 3 or 4 I would think, probably 3. So it's here for service, so what's its problems? Well the focus adjustment is extremely stiff. It doesn't even want to move back to the infinity position. It doesn't want to really move forward the other way much either, but it sort of does. Apart from that, well, that lever on the back that opens the uh, aperture is good enough. This one, which also moves the depth of field pointers, is somewhat sluggish and sticky. So we know that those, uh, that whole pointer mechanism needs to be cleaned. Nice fingerprint on the back of the lens. That's normal. Um, I'll send it back without that. So I need to be in. So what do I need to get in? Well first of all I want to remove the lens capsule from the mount. So I need a friction tool, get it on that inside uh, cone there, unscrew that and take the filter mount off the front of the camera. This one should do it. And it does. Now I'll choose the tip of my tweezers. very carefully because I don't want to scratch anything. That unscrews that. The filter mount comes off the front. I'm just having a quick look at that. Doesn't show any drop marks which is fairly unusual. They often do. And here we have the lens capsule in the mount. There are three screws here which adjust the infinity focus or the position of the uh, focus helical on the focus scale ring. These screws show some damage which suggests that someone's been poking at them with a uh, bad screwdriver or just poor technique. So let's have those screws out. and their washers and the lens capsule should come out of the mount so with the lens capsule out of the mount you can just check this focus helical and see if that's the uh, that's quite stiff but it's not as stiff as the focus appeared to be so that's part of the problem but not all of it the aperture feels quite snappy so any reluctance to move is probably in the mount rather than the lens capsule. Before I put the lens capsule completely aside, I'm just inspecting the state of the diaphragm blades in there. And you may notice, if I get that position so the light catches it better, there's some oily patches on those blades. I'll clean those blades without removing them from the mount because they are a lot of fun reassembling. There's five blades there, or five apparent blades, but each one is two pieces, so they're not fun. Pop that to one side, let's have a look at this mount. That's the lever that opens and closes the diaphragm itself, that's fine. The other one shifts the aperture pointers. Two things I notice here. First is it's stiff, it doesn't return to the rest position, and here this tab is bent. You can see it's cocked off at this angle. That's been bent in some fashion. Um, almost certainly that would be contributing to the fact that this thing is reluctant to move correctly. I wouldn't be at all surprised if the ring that that's fixed to isn't bent in some fashion. So I've just squared it up a bit by pressing on it. Let's see if it behaves any better. No, it's no better. 
So that's certainly going to be a problem. Let's get this apart then. So, four countersunk head screws at the back hold the lens mount section to the rest of the barrel. Sometimes you'll find that the screw at this position by the red dot has also got a touch of red paint on the head of the screw. That's uh, typically put there to help you align the lens correctly when you're refitting it. It's also a great thing to do if you manage to scar up one of those screws taking it apart. You make sure the ugly screw goes back in that position and cover its head with a touch of red paint. Let's lift this rear plate off the back. Here's our focus mount. Now here we can see this brass ring here. That's the cam that would couple to a Retina 3S rangefinder camera, the rangefinder. That appears to move relatively freely. I'll pull that apart and tame it shortly anyway. Let's see about taking all these rings off. Take this ring off. I normally put these rings down in the order they come off so that I know where, which order to put them back. This ring with one of the pointers on it was connected up to the fine spring. There are two springs here, a fine spring and a coarse spring. That was connected up to the fine spring. We have our spacer. The spacer ring separates the two uh, rings so that they because they counter rotate and it stops them being undue too much friction at that point. Right, I'll just see if I can lift that spring off its post. There it is. Lift this spring off its post. That's come away neatly at both ends, which basically yeah, it's just unhooked at this end. Here's our other depth of field pointer. That can come off. This ring can come off. It's got a little cam follower here that follows in that cam there, that space. Now we're down to the mount more or less and all that remains in here is the focus mechanism. Uh, this is where it's all clamped together. Now this is quite stiff. You can see here rust. So we know moisture has been in there. Given the colour of that I would say probably had a splash of salt water at some stage. This is held together with four screws that hold those brass plates in place. Okay, we can lift that off. So, the brass plates and four screws. Those plates clamp it all together. And our four screws, there's the fourth one there. So we're just down to the chassis basically here. This guide post guides the uh, lens capsule, basically stops the inner lens capsule from rotating. So that as the uh, outer helical is rotated, it forces the lens capsule to move outwards or inwards, not just rotate. And that's affected by this guide post here. The guide post held down here with two large screws. And underneath that post, we've got a Teflon washer, which I want to get off and clean, because I want to clean all these components. Take care with that Teflon washer. It uh, is easily stretched. If, it, if you stretch it, of course, it's distorted and it won't lie flat anymore, which would make it not work properly. So be careful with that. I'm looking at the mount here, see what I can see. 
Now there's some surface corrosion on the aluminium just here. If I can get that in the light correctly, it's a bit difficult. It's here. There's some corrosion visible here. Doesn't show well on the camera. I'm just checking that these two little gears here counter rotate smoothly. They, they appear to, there doesn't, doesn't appear to be a problem there. Excuse me. Back where I was. So, not much to see here. This spring here is slightly distorted. It's like somebody's hooked something under that, bent that ring up. I'll see if I can straighten that down. This is quite yellow. That focus scale is not normally yellow. It's probably oil that's done that. And here, this piece here, has got some rust on it. Well, I noticed that on the other face too. That's riveted to this ring. Um, there's no danger of replacing that. I'll just make sure that all that rust is removed, any loose rust. And if I put a touch of clear lacquer on that, that'll seal that from any future problem. So, basically it's in pieces. I don't see anything insurmountable in terms of uh, problems there. And all I need to do is clean everything up and reassemble it. That's next. I'll start by removing the focus scale itself here. Just because it looks a bit buckled up at the ends. I'm not sure why that should be. It's just a, a bit buckled there and on the other side. I don't know why that should be particularly like that. We'll pop that back in a minute. Looking at this piece, of course we've got that rust there. Let's have a look at that. That really is only on the surface. It's cut through the nickel plating. And it just scrapes away fairly easily. And on the other face, much the same. Yeah, the nickel plating has certainly suffered. I don't think the uh, underlying, there's no structural problem there. It's not like the uh, underlying steel is in danger of bailing. I'll clean that and uh, put a touch of lacquer on that to seal it. All right, just using a bit of naphtha on a cotton bud, I'm just wiping that, uh, those components clean. There's a bit of dirt, a bit of staining there from the rust that I'd scraped loose on that bracket. I'm just making sure that I'm rid of any dust and grit and dried out grease too. A little patch of roughness I notice on the mount just here and that's where this edge has hit something. There's a couple of sharp marks on it. I don't know if they've been rubbing against anything in here. There's no obvious problem. But I'll just smooth those up. Yeah, certainly just a pair of sharp marks here and here. I'll just rub those smooth and a bit of uh, fine wet and dry. I don't know what could have caused those.
I'm just making sure I have this thing completely clean. Mostly any dust or grit and certainly it feels a bit rough down at the bottom here and that surface down here is where those uh, brass clamps run that hold this thing together and they've got a bit of a rough feel to them this is al aluminium and it's quite soft so it's probably got some damage there from grit having been ground in there at some stage so I have to check that quite carefully this isn't uh, a bad example by any means this is quite clean apart from that it obvious rust on that little lever there there's um, this would be quite a good example apart from that that seems good now this scale ring it's quite yellowed typically that's oil that causes the problem like that it could just be the lacquer because this aluminium trim ring would have been lacquered and it might be the lacquer that's yellowed certainly naphtha's not making any impression on the colouring not as far as I can see anyway there's a bit of colour coming off here that le le leads me to believe that that's probably oil staining it's probably stained that lacquer finish on the outside it's probably not going to come off it's not a serious issue it's just um, looks a bit unusual because I know that that ring is normally fairly bright not fairly yellow as it is in this case it looks fairly even so I don't think that's a problem and here at the end that's just a little bit damaged there's a little bit bowed I'll see if I can squash that flat and uh, a pair of tweezers might do that the other end's fine this end here looks a little bit bowed so it's like something had caught under the edge of it and it's just where the screws are it's just like something had caught under there that looks fine now so that scale ring could probably go back on that was just held with two screws small chrome screws and pop them back in place Just checking I've got it the right way round. That's that. That's all back in place. I haven't made any impression on that yellow colouring, but uh, it doesn't look out of place. If you didn't know any better that would be considered probably as it was meant to be this Teflon washer I'll just clean that so what's coming off here is mostly grease and a little bit of dust probably that's the grease is gathered up Of course I just want this nice and clean. Let's flip that paper over so you can see 
the progress let's put it on a clean part there yeah it's just about invisible now so I'm just making sure I've got all of that clean that's just so that there's no ingrained grit in here which would make things run rough you can see that's pretty much invisible now and sticking to my fingers this piece this is a bit dirty, a bit dusty by no means a poor example any time you're dealing with equipment that's 60 years old there's going to be a certain amount of dust and grit and surface corrosion, dried grease, things of that nature there's no getting away from it I just need to get all the surfaces clean Since we know the lens has been splashed at some stage, it's a reasonable likelihood that it was that that event happened somewhere like the river or the lake or the sea, where there's probably sand about. So there's always the opportunity for sand or grit to get in to places we don't want it. That looks fine these brass clamps now these these brass clamps typically have some green coating on them at this point at the ends and that coating is some low friction material something akin to Teflon I would imagine in its properties and in this case that coating is mutilated and damaged and scraped away That's unusual. Um, it means that something it, very something's been in there and abraded that away. Possibly the lens has been apart before and someone had reassembled it and done everything up too tight. But that green coating has pretty much disappeared here, completely gone here, here it's gone and there's rough parts on the metal and there's just a little fragment of it left at that point. I'm not sure how you'd go about wearing all that stuff off in that pattern exactly. That might work fine with some molybdenum paste lubricating that and that's what I'll attempt in the first instance. If it doesn't I'll have to look into my parts and see if I've got the remains of a lens I can scavenge those pieces from. That's an unusual situation to be in and uh, that would explain why there's such a rough edge on this aluminium body here where that piece runs because normally that's smooth and it's smooth over most of its area but some parts here are quite rough I can only think that at some stage uh, grit has been in there and done that but why I'm not seeing any obvious grit here now is a bit of a mystery I suppose it's possible that the lens has been in the sand the sand has done its damage and the lens has since been serviced 
and the sand removed, but the uh, damage it did is still here to be seen. One of life's mysteries again. I have to see how we get on with this. I've zoomed you in a long way here. I'm hoping that you can see there's some deep scratches on the aluminium body here in a couple of places and all the way around here. See, oh, you can see that on the camera, yeah, you just about can. There's a deep scratch that runs all the way through here. And another one here. And another one here. It's quite marked. It means that something, some foreign body was down inside the mount and it scourged that aluminium. The back of the mount here, where those clamp brass clamp plates run is nice and smooth at this point absolutely fine it's a little bit rough over here but I get to this point and it's really gouged that surface is really really rough and I can get to those surfaces to give them a bit of a clean with some very very fine wet and dry but underneath this bracket of course it's very hard to get to those because those surfaces are tucked up under here. And just running the tip of my tweezers on that inside surface, so I can feel that roughness. I don't think I'll be able to get that out. I'm going to have to see if I've got some parts for one of these lenses. Because ideally I'd like to replace this piece and of course these two pieces which have lost their, their coating. While I've been hunting through my parts I found a replacement for the uh, front part of that mount but it's, it's oddly discoloured. It's got a cloudy look to the appearance of it like it was uh, water damaged or something, I'm not sure what it is. But I do have another entire mount here This is off a later camera. It doesn't have the coupling for the rangefinder for a Retina 3S camera. But otherwise it looks complete. It looks quite clean. Um, looking at the state of it, it's vaguely possible it's even uh, new old stock. But this, given the, the appearance, given how clean it is, I think that it's probably the best bet is just to move the optical components direct into this piece and be done with it. I'll have to speak to the owner and see what they want to do. But this is probably the, probably the answer, I think. I just don't seem to have... Uh, an awful lot of spare parts to work on the one I've got in here. Here's one of those brackets with its friction, low friction material still readily visible on the ends there, which would have replaced one of these ends. But I can only seem to find one of them. Um, finding parts for 60 year old cameras of course is always a bother and a nuisance. If I can find enough parts to reassemble this and if I can get that smooth enough to work reliably it, to be honest, running my finger across that surface it's, it's like running your finger down a gravel road, it's really rough. If I can find enough parts to clean it up and reuse as much as possible of the original lens I'll do so. Otherwise I think it's going to have to be swapped into this housing. Well I've done more searching through my piece piles of parts and broken pieces, broken cameras, broken parts of cameras, lenses etc. And I've found more pieces and enough to continue putting this back together I think. So the key component I was looking for was the front, uh, front component here. And I found one, it's a little bit discoloured at that point. But that's largely hidden underneath the hood at the front, so I'm not, both, not 
very concerned about that. I've just made sure that all these surfaces here are nice and smooth and I've done that by using some uh, very fine wet and dry, I think it's about 800 grit and a little bit of Brasso and I've worked that component together on the base that it fits and just run that backwards and forwards there with a bit of Brasso and cleaned it all away again now to make sure those components are nice and smooth Is this camera going to focus? Yeah, it's thinking about it so I can start assembling these components I think now the first thing I've got here is this Teflon spacer and that fits on here it's got to get that settled correctly because it's um, it's inclined to never stay entirely flat it gets stretched and it doesn't want to go where you want it to go I'm going to take a little bit of molybdenum and paste here just run it around the front surface here which should contact almost nothing at all that should be floating in space but I bet it's not and pop this in position which is right there just checking that movement that seems nice and smooth I can see my video camera is grizzling that the battery is flat or thereabouts so I'll stop right here and change it before it shuts down and stops for me